Good morning. I call to order the April 9th meeting of the uh, Saline County Board of Commissioners. Will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Shadwick? Commissioner Sparks? Here. Commissioner Vedrickson? Here. Commissioner Weiss? Here. Commissioner White? Here. I see you please stand and join me in a flag salute followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll now move to the uh, public forum portion of our meeting uh, where citizens may speak on county government, uh, usually limited to three minutes and items that are not on today's agenda. Norman Mantle, Salina. Last week, you authorized the county highway department sometimes to use county equipment if somebody got stuck. I understand trying to be a good neighbor, but I can't remember how many years ago it was, but Robert Steffen ruled you cannot use county equipment to do private enterprise. You're competing against private enterprise who makes money so you can generate revenue for the county. So you're competing against private ent entities. You, uh, Robert Stephenson says, no, you can't do that. It's against the law. Uh, if I may correct you real quickly, we did not authorize something like that. We did not authorize that at all. So proceed. I'll go back and look at the recording. Uh, number two, home rule, is, is that coming in, is that in effect yet, or is that still in the legislature to be passed? Well, portion of it is still, we have home rule to some degree, but the parts that are being discussed are still in the legislature. Because we're going to be conflicting with state and federal laws if we bring home rule in here. If you use rule, home rule here, you're overruling state law and federal law, which is not allowed. Uh, another question. We've kind of eliminated the uh, planning and zoning director. We saved some money. So. Not true again. We have not eliminated that position. You're sharing it with another county. True. So it's part time. Uh, are you going to consider that as replacing the EMS director? We don't need two of them. If we don't need a full-time planning and zoning director, we don't need a full-time EMS director. Use just the deputy director, which is funded with a grant. If you eliminate the director's position, you can use that money elsewhere. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. Karen Shade, Salina. I was pleased yesterday that you taped um, Jim Robertson's presentation so people will be able to go back and view it. Um, to sum it up, there's an old saying, um, if you always do what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always gotten. And this was a consultant who in 2014 recommended building a new criminal justice jail, and it's not too surprising that in 2019 he recommended, essentially, he found the lowest operating and capital um, costs associated with building a new jail on a new site. Several things bo bother me about the presentation. One of them is we don't know what our census is going to be in 2020 or 2030. It could grow, people are advocating for that, but we've seen generally a broad decline in Western Kansas. So it could go either way. If the jail, po or if our county population grows, does that mean the jail population grows by the same percentage? Or does it mean, you know, if, if the population drops, might we not have more crime because of tighter economic circumstances if we lose businesses and things like that? The one thing I was struck, he placed, he, he gave very conservative estimates. It didn't seem like he knew, there was a, not a lot of good judgment about where this, this um, surge in the average length of stay came from. There was nothing to really point to. But he put a lot of emphasis on um, the work being done with pretrial, um, and I think that's, 
that seems like it will hold a lot of possibility. I've heard it discussed for more than four years, so those things take time to implement. The whole thing about docketing and sentencing rely on um, this Judiciary Committee. And I think we have to keep in mind that there are powers that be that think we need a fourth, perhaps fifth court in this county. And I think those folks may do whatever is expedient to getting a fourth or fifth court. And some of those goals may or may not be um, in line with, with those efforts. And speaking from the state, if this county can't <coughs> um, house its own inmates near, on, near premises and, and doesn't have to go out and go pull these people in, if there's those inefficiencies, why would they want to build a fourth or fifth court here? I think there's a whole lot here to think about. Um, as I was tooling through looking for just how many beds had he predicted we might need in the 2014 expansion, it was 344. Um, and some of his estimates came in higher based on this, this population surge or length of stay surge. Um, I was caught um, by, I came across an article that based on the 2010 census that showed that Saline County had three times the number of juveniles being committing crimes than in the state and in the nation. And I thought, well, I wonder how true this was. But then I remembered we had a juvenile detention center at the time. And the population of that entity was growing and growing and growing. And there was talk about building a new juvenile detention center. And the county commissioners kind of acting on their own said, no, we're going to send our juveniles to Junction City. And that did an immediate turnaround on the number of kids committing crimes and, and what's happening. So, you know, we were kind of just talking earlier in the other room, but you fellas do hold a lot of ability to make changes. And I'm sorry it's so murky, the path isn't really clear, but, um, you know, I think it's gonna require executive action. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak to the commission? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission for uh, regular business. Item number one. Approve agenda for public forum as presented. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the agenda for the public forum as presented. I second. Been moved and seconded that we approve today's agenda for the public forum. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number two. Approval of county commission minutes for April 2nd, 2019. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the County Commission minutes of April 2nd, 2019 as presented. Second. Been moved and seconded that we accept the County Commission minutes as presented for April 2nd, 2019. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Item number three. Sexual Assault Awareness Proclamation with Sheila Beeson, Sexual Assault Advocate for DVAC. Good morning, Sheila. Good morning, thank you for having me today. Um, on behalf of DVAC, the Domestic Violence Association of Central Kansas. Um, okay, so proclamation. To the people of Saline County, greetings. Sexual Assault Awareness Month calls attention to the fact that sexual violence is widespread and impacts every person in our community. The goal of SAM, the Sexual Assault Awareness Month, is to raise public awareness about sexual violence and educate communities on how to prevent it. Rape, sexual assault, and sexual harassment harm our community, and statistics show one in five women and one in 67 men will be raped at some point in their lives. Child abuse prevention must be a pri priority to confront the reality that one in six boys and one in four girls will experience sexual assault before age 18. On campus, one in five women and one in 16 men are sexually assaulted during their time in college. In 2017, 38 incidents of sexual violence were reported to law enforcement in Saline County, um, 33 of which were the city, to the city police and then five to the sheriff's department. The theme of this year's Sexual Assault Awareness Month campaign is I Ask. The campaign champions the power of asking for consent, whether it be asking to hold someone's hand, for permission to share personal information with others, or if a partner is interested in sex. 
Consent is a clear, concrete example of what it takes to end sexual harassment, abuse, and assault. The goal of the campaign is to empower everyone to put consent into practice. I ask, is the statement by which individuals will demonstrate that asking for consent is a healthy, normal, and necessary part of everyday interactions? The Domestic Violence Association of Central Kansas, DVAC, is Saline, or Saline County local victims advocacy and services program for people in our community who have had sexual and or domestic violence inflicted upon them. Saline County joins advocates and community, communities across the country in taking action to prevent sexual violence. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month and each day of the year is an opportunity to create change for the future. Now therefore, Saline County Board of Commissioners hereby proclaims the month of April 2019 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Thank you for the presentation. Do you have any uh, uh, activities planned? Uh we sure do, yes. Um, at the beginning of the month, we did have a candlelight vigil and it w was very touching. It was a very um, moving event at KW, at Kansas Wesleyan. Um, and then going on into the month, um, April 15th, we have an excellent speaker coming to the community of Salina, Russ Tuttle. He is with the Stop Trafficking Project, and he's going to be talking about understanding and preventing the commercial sexual exploitation of children. We really encourage all anybody out of the community. It's a free um, event. It's going to be held at Kansas Wesleyan University Sam's Chapel. Everybody's invited. It will be at 7 p.m. on April 15th. Um, we also have... Um, our healing yoga for sexual assault survivors and allies. That will be a free event. We will have advocates there too to speak with anybody that feels they need to talk about their experience or somebody they know. And that will be April 20th at 10.30 a.m. at a work in progress yoga studio and that's located at 218 East Walnut. And then I'm really excited to announce that our annual speak night will be held again April 26th, 7 p.m. at Astra Books and Coffee House. Um, there we are collaborating with CAPS. And so we'll be talking about Child Abuse Prevention Month and awareness um, at the first half of the event. And then the second half after intermission, we'll have more of adult, maybe survivors of child sexual abuse or even adult sexual abuse. Um, and survivors can come and read, um, allies can come and read. We're gonna have music and dance and all kinds of great um, artistic expression to help support survivors of sexual assault. So that's a lot. Um, and then we also have a campus advocate and she is gonna be having a lot of things going on with the K-State and the Kansas Wesleyan students too. So we're excited about this month. It does sound like you're going to yeah. be a busy group, that's <laughs> for sure. Are. <laughs> so, all right, uh, that having been said, uh, I'll entertain a motion from one of the commissioners. Mr. Chairman, I move we declare April 2019 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Second. Been moved and seconded as we declare April 2019 as Sexual Awareness Month in Saline County. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Sheila, Thank I do you. have a signed oh, proclamation great. if you want to come up and get that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sue. Thank you, Thank you. We'll now move to uh, item number four. Fly Salina Marketing 2020 Budget Request with Tim Rogers, Executive Director of Salina Airport Authority. Good morning, Mr. Rogers. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, thank you, and I appreciate the opportunity to come before you this morning to talk to you about um, uh, the success of uh, United Jet Service to Chicago and Denver and uh, can I recap the past year and then look ahead to the to the future and then ask for your continued partnership on the Fly Salina marketing campaign. It is appropriate coming before you today since uh, Sunday, this past Sunday marked the, the completion of 52 weeks of uh, United Jet Service. Seems like uh, it's been here longer than it has but the 52 weeks went quickly. But it was marked by you know the numbers and uh, that were uh, recorded through that 52 weeks, over 35 well 35,191 total passengers for that uh, uh, first year of United Jet Service that began on April 9th of uh, 2018. That's total passengers passing through the MJ Kennedy Air Terminal, so that means that 
about 17,600 passengers flew outbound and uh, 17,590 passengers flew inbound. So it's usually a pretty even split when you look at total passengers of those that are inbound, outbound. And we look at the marketing uh, process here and uh, in April 9 and April, the beginning of April is kind of aligns with, does align with the uh, the EAS contract that was awarded to SkyWest uh, Airlines to operate uh, to operate the United Jet Service uh, from here uh, to Denver and to Chicago, so that's why we're back here to renew the Fly Salina campaign, which uh, for the first year I think uh, helped us perform to the level of uh, meeting and exceeding expectations as far as passenger growth and uh, passenger activity at the airport. Um, again. Talk about kind of the past year and wins. I think uh, I think everybody likes a winner, and I think we are, have a winner here. When we look at traffic, air passenger airline passenger employment traffic. The numbers that I just re reviewed with you represents a 53 percent increase over the previous year. Uh, and again, it was a really uh, met and exceeded expectations by United and SkyWest. And, um, and we're not done. We can still grow those numbers and it's an upward trend. Airfare wins. This is some of the work that, that is really core and at the heart of the consulting work that Gary Foss and the ArcStar, the ArcStar group does is to really look at our air, air fares and that's what helps the area, the residents in this area, Saline County and North Central Kansas really see the Salina Regional Airport as their airport of convenience. Not drive to Wichita, not drive to Kansas City, but come into our community and uh, depart and arrive back here. In the past, I think we have been hampered by higher than average, than higher fares than other, other markets. But working with United Airlines, Salina is now competitive on both business and leisure fares. Uh, and that's on a one, usually business fares are a one-way fare uh, that's offered out of a market. Leisure fares are defined as round-trip fares and we're competitive in both, uh, in both when we look at Wichita and look at Kansas City. And again, what's new, we've been able to bring in some special fares, $89 one-way fares, uh, two times this past year that creates kind of the marketing buzz and the interest, and, uh, but also fill seats during down periods. And so we're really working with the airlines. The airlines are seeing this as a real market to develop, and you do it by making your fares competitive as compared to the other markets that people would like to drive to, Wichita or Kansas City. And then we also have fill seats when the traffic is down, uh, times when uh, typically the traffic dips, we bring that traffic back up. Our media campaign, uh, which the Sling, Sling County has been a partner with and I think has really been a success in the numbers, kind of show the wins there. And our native digital and digital and, and uh, social media activity, we've recorded over three million impressions. That's three million times that people have at least seen an, a digital ad or a Facebook ad. And what's great in this uh, environment is that uh, that can be measured and that's reported back to us uh, every two weeks uh, during the course of the year. Billboards throughout the region uh, have, re have uh, have a, have a number related to them, a number of impressions per year, relates to the number of cars per day that passes a billboard on I-70 or I-135, but 317,000 billboard impressions over the past year. AMC 10 Salina, the theater here, 30-second uh, video runs, and uh, that is recording uh, some 399,000 moviegoers are seeing that on an annual basis. And the Tony's Pizza Event Center, over 150,000 uh, annual visitors and participants in events such as the Farm Show that just concluded saw United and Fly Salina, you know, advertising and building awareness. So we have that win there. We are now focusing on taking the the products that United offers that helps provide discounts to travel to individuals and to organizations. Uh, mileage plus for the individual. And for example, for the county, Perks Plus would give the county, you know, those options as an organization for travel to uh, realize discounts. We're also working with groups such as the Kansas Association of Independent Colleges. Kansas Wesling is help, helping us there. The Sunflower uh, Health Network, uh, working there with the hospitals and medical institutions within the region, uh, making sure they get the full uh, amount of discounts that they are, and uh, savings, travel savings that they are, that they are, entitled to. 
Finally, looking ahead, where do we believe we can go uh, based upon the, su the success that we have had? And we are looking, I think, uh, favorably at the ability to go ahead and look at uh, work with United and SkyWest on the options of a second flight, second Chicago flight. And then we're looking at uh, Hayes and untagging the Hayes uh, stop and go nonstop to Denver. And then once we start talking about Chicago uh, as second flight, all of a sudden Houston comes into the conversation. So you could see a uh, possibility of, of a Chicago, Solana, Houston type of routing. Uh, and uh, we're gathering data from area business and industry on the Chicago uh, benefits there. Uh, we'll be working this summer with United and SkyWest as we build uh, the plan uh, to try to look at these options. Doubt if we get everything, but uh, at least we've got a plan moving ahead. The key to maintaining the momentum is the uh, partnership, the city, the county, the airport authority. The city commission approved uh, last night $60,000 uh, to match uh, uh, up with uh, the $60,000 request this morning. The Saline Airport Authority has budgeted $73,500 for this next 12 months of fly Salina marketing and, uh, and advertising. Uh, your, your support would be greatly appreciated and, uh, and I really value the partnership that we've had this past year and the chance to bring really truly trans transformative transportation options to our citizens of, of our community, our county, and our region. Be glad to answer any questions, uh, Mr. Chairman, that you and the commissioners may have. Questions from the commissioners? I'll make an observation from yesterday. Uh, we had uh, a couple of visitors here uh, for our jail presentation that were from Iowa, and they did uh, make mention of the fact that there was uh, billboards that they saw coming into the city and mentioning the fact that uh, Solana had pretty good air service in here and and uh, for Chicago and Denver. So it, it is being observed and noticed. Good. Thank so, you for passing that on. All right. Uh, As we're knee deep in our, our budget process, uh, we're certainly will take that into account Great. and look at it. And I'm sure we'll be able to help in some fashion. Great. Thank you very much all for right. your consideration. Yeah. Thank you, Tim, for Thank taking you. the time to come in and visit with us. We'll move on to uh, item number five. RFA 133-19, Oliver Hag Scholarships with Rick Lamer, Livestock and Expo Director. Good morning, morning. Rick. Uh, this is a request for action to consider for approval six renewable $1,000 Oliver Hag Memorial Scholarships for fall 2019. These are renewable for four years, provided the student maintains a 3.0 grade point average and remains enrolled in an ag-related field. Uh, alternatives for action are to approve six scholarships or deny six scholarship. Staff recommends approving six renewable $1,000 scholarships. Our scholarship committee met April 1st and it was their consensus that of the six applicants we <coughs> received, they were all highly qualified and chosen to receive this award. There is no budget impact. These dollars come out of the farm account, which is funded by lease payments made on land that Mr. Hag Wilt Saline County in 1991. The balance in the farm account is 182588 Okay, um, before we get into the question portion of it, I do want to announce those, those recipients for the 2019 Oliver Hegg Scholarship. Uh, Blake Bell of El Saline High School, Caitlin Elder of Salina South High School, Madison Crowder of Salina Central, Kyler Cox from Bennington High, and I should mention probably that Kyler is a, a resident of Saline County, even though he attends um, a county out of or a school out of the county, but he is a resident. Uh, Kaylee Heimer, southeast of Saline, and Nicholas Davenport of El Saline High School. Thank you for your, your hard work in this and uh, getting together and, and uh, getting this many recipients. I don't think this is uh, probably a larger number than um, we normally have received, isn't it? Since 2001, six is the most that have ever been awarded in one year. Well, I can tell you, I for one am very happy to be able to award this type of scholarship and happy that we have the resources to be able to fund it. So other comments from commissioners? Not, uh, and I assume that, uh, what, in next week or They'll two weeks? They'll be here April 23rd for the presentation. Okay, we'll look forward to that. Thanks. All right, thank you, Rick. Appreciate it. We'll move on to uh, uh, item number Do we need it? Okay. 
Excuse me, I'm a little ahead of myself. We do need a motion to, uh, to award the uh, six renewable $1,000 scholarships. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the, uh, the award of six renewable $1,000 scholarships. Second the motion. It's been moved and seconded that we approve uh, the award of six renewable $1,000 scholarships. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion does carry. Thanks. Thanks again, Rick. Thank you, Rick. We will move on to um, item number six. RFA 132-19, Next Tech Cloud Phone Services with Annie Grievous, Community Corrections Director. Good morning, Annie. Good morning. Um, thanks to the work Andrew did, I want to acknowledge that you did, oh, you did help us. Okay. <laughs> you acted like you didn't want to be acknowledged. I never know. I like Spotlight. Some people don't, some people do. You just never know. <laughs> I couldn't have told. <laughs> okay, so Community Corrections is requesting approval of signature of a, a contract um, cloud phone services proposal from Next Tech. Our current system is no longer going to be supported beginning in 2020, so parts and services will be hard or unable to obtain. City County Building moved to the Next Tech cloud phone system in 2016, so Community Corrections is asking to be allowed to do the same. The change will result in a 60 month contract to be signed. Um, the rate is 565. $82 per month for total expense within a, the 60 month contract of 33,949 and 20 cents. Um, they will supply the equipment for the services and there'll be no upfront charges associated with the contract. Um, so I know that um, there was further look into this um, and I appreciate this. This contract was referred to Mike Montoya. He didn't have a problem with the contract but he did want us to work a little closer with Andrew on this, county administrator. Um, anyway, I'd like you to sign it and approve. Okay, any comments? I, yeah, there are probably some comments. He's giving me kind of some looks. Well, the, the original Next Tech, and Brad helped with this as well, uh, the original Next Tech contract with them was a little bit higher since it was a separate contract. What we were trying to do is to bring that on the counties because the county already has a phone. Uh, IT contract with Next Tech Cloud Phone Services. Uh, Next Tech would not um, approve that because they pay their, the, the equipment is built into this monthly charge and they recoup that equipment charge over five years. So they wouldn't jump onto the counties because the county only has three years left. So they, they denied that. They stuck with the five years, but they did give us the same pricing that the county has. So it's the same. So I was happy with the way it ended. Brad, do you have any further comments uh, or anything to add? Uh, no, I think that that uh, pretty well sums it up. Yep. Okay. Uh, my question: uh, the the funding here, the thirty three thousand nine forty nine, is not a direct cost to the county. Is it's that no correct? No cost to the county. That it's is our grant funds. Your grant funds. Correct. That's, I want to make that clear to the public that uh, it's not a cost to the county. So, community corrections is not a large cost to the county ever, right? Okay. Financially. Further uh, questions or comments from commissioners? Before we move on, I'll ask for public comment if there is any on the RFA. Seeing then, I'll bring it back to the commission for possible action. Mr. Chairman, I move we sign the proposal from Next Tech for cloud phone services at Community Corrections. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 132 19 Next Tech cloud phone services. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion does carry. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Yes. We'll move on to uh, item number seven. RFA 134-19, Aladdin Food Services Agreement with Rosie Walter, Senior Services Director. Good morning, Rosie. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, Senior Services is requesting commission approval to sign our Aladdin contract, which is for food services. Um, Aladdin comes in, as you know, every day and provides all the food, orders all the food, prepares all the food, takes care of Meals on Wheels, takes care of our dining room services. This is for a five-year contract. Um, Mike Montoya has reviewed this contract. We have, um, the only difference is, well, it's five years instead of one year, and the management fee of 1580 and 26 additional per year. Five-year term, 
they have an incentive of $35,000 that they want to give. I guess this is pretty standard practice. Also, I'd like to note that um, Aladdin is a sister company to the company that provides services for the jail. Um, Aladdin provides services for K-State and for the um, Highway Patrol. And those $35,000 in um, incentive fees, I'm going to request that we use those towards um, grants. Any further comments, Matching Andrew, grants. from your end of it? Um, Rosie and I talked about whether we can go out or whether we should just accept this Aladdin contract. So we talked about the bidding process and the, the RF, RFP process. Uh, since this Aladdin contract is so unique in that they're not just delivering food services, they're delivering, delivering food services and staffing. Mm -hmm. So whenever we have a staffing shortage or K-State has yes. a staffing shortage, the J or the Highway Patrol, they can pull individuals. So that's why it's unique um, and this wouldn't be a bid because it is professional services they're providing us a service um, so they are very very unique therefore a sole service so this was kind of our only option tell me um, tell me what our contract and their food services <clears throat> what does that include food services they do everything in regards to food so they order the food they prepare the food they maintain all of the staff um, we don't the only thing that we get is a bill from them for all of the services in regards to food. And uh, additional costs uh, as far as the cost of the food is, is an additional cost to the county, is that, is that correct? Should the food go up, yeah, it would be an additional cost. The only additional cost that's in this contract though is that management fee of the 1580 and 26 per year. And there are also the $35,000 incentive. Questions from commissioners? A couple, comments? couple questions. Uh, you still have uh, working with Aladdin the uh, control over uh, the diet, the meals, the yeah. food that's purchased, the type of meals. The yes. Every month, um, the kitchen manager gets a menu to me, and I go through it with him, and we adjust or change. But also, on that note, I'll say that. Our board is meeting um, tomorrow, actually, our subcommittee, and we're gonna go through that, and we are making some big changes to the menu. We did a survey, and you know, we're gonna go through the survey and make those changes. And this did go through legal, I assume. That yes. Uh, my, my comment would be uh, around your uh, signing bonus of $35,000, and you did mention that you wanted to appropriate that towards I, I want to use it for match dollars for the grants that I'm applying for, partial in that. I guess my only, my only thought there would be is that n to not necessarily earmark this at this time for that expense uh, so that we would just have it available in, our, in, your, in your budget for something else that may be coming down the pike. Uh, I have I mean, a lot. I know that, <laughs> and, and that's why I'm, I'm saying if we can use that money wisely in another field, okay. uh, you know, uh, ADA uh, restrooms or something to that, that effect, uh, and that maybe we shouldn't necessarily say we're earmarking this for one particular thing right now. Okay. That's, that's my only thought on that. I I'm don't know what others that. might think about that. So. Would it be possible to eliminate the liver off the menu? <laughs> Never. <laughs> that's one of our busiest days. <laughs> liver, fried chicken, lasagna, meatloaf. Oh, country fried steak. Are there any uh, public comment regarding this? Seeing then I'll bring it back to the commission for possible action. Mr. Chairman, I move we sign the contract with Aladdin Food Service Partnership. I second it. It's been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 134-19 for the Aladdin Food Service Agreement. Further comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion does carry. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you. We'll move on to uh, item number eight. RFA 135-19, Desktop Computers with Brad Bowers, Community Technology, or Computer Technology Director. Good morning, Brad. Good morning. Um, information Technology has a request uh, before you this morning. Uh, we're asking permission to expend 23,919.85 for Dell Optiplex 3060 desktop computers. 
Um, Saline County budgeted $24,000 for this project in the 2019 technology improvement uh, budget. Uh, with your permission, we plan to purchase the desktops via the state of Kansas contract in place with Dell government. Um, we received the following quotes for this project. Uh, Dell government, $23,919.85. CDWG, $31,710. And PCMG, $27,823. Um, staff recommends that we approve this uh, budgeted request from Dell government for $23,919.53. Um, Microsoft is sunsetting the Windows 7 desktop operating system in January of 2020. Um, this, this purchase will help us to kind of kill two birds with one stone in that we, we try to turn over our PC inventory every five years and this will also help us to meet that goal. In addition, it will help us to, to change out the desktops that we still have out there that are running Windows 7, uh, the, the desktop operating system that Microsoft is, is sunsetting. So um, as I said, we, we budgeted uh, $24,000 in, uh, in the technology improvement plan for this project. All right. Uh, questions or comments from the commissioners? You did say this will clean up all your Windows 7s? Yes. We, we may have a few at the end of the year. We'll just have to see. But during the budget process, we're, we're going to have enough information to know what we'll, what we'll need for next year, if any. Yep. Was nice I, would, to I would point out, too, that... that on this item, we, we have uh, six micro towers in, and I'd like to explain a little bit about that if I could. Please. This is a miniaturization technology that, that, that really all, all uh, manufacturers are coming out with. The dimensions on this thing are 7.2 inches high, 1.4 inches wide, and 7 inches deep. So it's, it's basically the size of a tablet. The, the, the thing... The thing about the, um, about the micro units that is unique compared to the other ones is these units will not have any spinning disk drives in them. They will have all flash storage in them, so there won't be any more, any more disk drives to, to create heat and to go bad, no moving parts. So it's kind of a, kind of a test. Um, the idea might be that if, you're, you know, if the room's on fire, you can grab your desktop, put it under your arm, and go and go out the door. So just wanted to explain that. Well, thank you. To someone that's not exactly what you would call technological savvy, <laughs> I appreciate the explanation. So further comments from commissioners or questions? Andrew, anything from you? Thank you, Brad. Um, is there a, uh, any public comment regarding this? Bring it back to the commissioners for action. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the purchase desktop computers from Dell government in the amount of $23,919.85 as listed in RFA 135-19. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 135-19 for desktop top computers uh, from Dell government. Further comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion does carry. Thank item you. number Good nine. Good job, Brad. Wow. 20 Thank you, Brad. Item number nine. Emergency management update with Hannah Stambaugh, Deputy County Administrator. <laughs> Good morning, Hannah. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, this will be, I guess, my last update from the emergency management standpoint, but hopefully to give you um, a bit very excited for the new role that I am in today. Uh, so we'll just talk about what has what happened the first quarter of 2019, so January, February, and March. Uh, as you know, the, the start of 2019 obviously was uh, quite cold and full of quite a bit of moisture. We experienced several different winter weather advisories, warnings, also some blizzard warnings that were in place both January and February. 
to kind of give you uh, just some graphics uh, to show uh, this was a snowstorm on January 11th through the overnight hours to the morning of the 12th that brought a winter storm to the area and averaged about 3.5 inches of snow for our particular area. You can see out by the uh, Hayes area and then to the eastern part of the state and into Missouri received much more. Next would be on February 6th, we experienced what they called an Arctic cold front that brought freezing drizzle, sleet, even some small hail. And the office also reported several uh, folks that had experienced what they call thunder snow, which was kind of neat. Uh, definitely a different sound that, that, that uh, was heard. On February the 19th, we had another round of snow that came through and reported an average of about three inches of snow. Um, this is another picture from one of our citizens that um, the snowfall amount in their backyards. And then this would be the snow reports uh, throughout the state and the Wichita Weather Service area, which m most of the heavier snow was to the south of us. The last major winter event that we had was on February the 23rd, where a blizzard warning was issued for much of Kansas. Uh, the Interstate 70 was closed from Colorado to Salina at one point and dumped about four inches of snow in that area. That weekend was pretty contentious. We had some really big major events going on with a 4A wrestling tournament and then also a junior wrestling tournament that next day. So we had quite a few visitors here. It made it kind of difficult and challenging to make sure that we were communicating to all the different event sponsors as far as what to expect and then also to travel conditions. So overall, on average, we were, uh, had seen about 3.36 inches of precipitation since January 1st of 2019. Needless to say, with the amount of moisture that we've received this winter season, drought conditions are basically non-existent. Um, but that also means that we have some very strong soil moistures that are well above average for Kansas. Looking forward, they are predicted to remain above average through the month of June. And looking to the months ahead, there is a large possibility of higher, uh, higher frequency of severe weather risks uh, traditionally in this tornado alley area this season. So we are entering into severe weather season, uh, even though there is predicted to be freezing temperatures later this week and possibility of snow. I guess we'll see what happens, but obviously just something to be able to make sure that uh, folks are paying attention to. Um, just as an announcement, um, so this evening at 6.30, the National Weather Service out of Wichita is coming to bring presenters from their office to do a, an advanced storm spatter class. This is an event that we hosted probably about two or three years ago, and they only do three of them a year, and they selected Salina to do one. So we are really um, anticipating a nice large crowd for this. It is a free event, again, 6.30 this evening, and we will be at Salina South High School in their auditorium. So we'd love to see for folks to come out, and I call it kind of the weather geeky type stuff. So if you have any interest whatsoever in severe weather and learning a little bit more, please come out and join us. Typically, how long does that last? Uh, about an hour? an hour and a half to two yeah. hours. Um, of course, usually in the advanced class, there's a lot more questions. Uh, you have some of those more ad advanced or um, uh, further knowledgeable folks when it comes to weather. So you've got the experts right there, so you might as well ask them questions. But I know that they're going to go into a, a deep conversation and analytical um, revisions and uh, just a review of what happened with the Eureka tornado which is something that uh, should be an, a bit an interesting topic. I think it was about a month ago that we had the initial um, weather reporters meeting. Uh, I did attend that uh, as a novice, yeah. and it was quite interesting. So uh, anyone that uh, has an interest in that, those types of things should uh, should show up because it's, it's pretty pretty informing. Yeah, we had about 150 people that showed up to that event. Yeah. It was it was great. So as far as uh, for emergency management activities, uh, 2019 has been started off with presentations to not only the Saline County Commission, but the City of Salina Commissioners on the Emergency Radio Communications Project. Since then, we've taken opportunities to go and speak to different civic organizations throughout the city and the county to talk about what this project is and the needs for it so that we can at least educate and inform the public of, of what it is that we are doing. We are in, currently in the process of building the request for proposals and we should have draft information for review um, actually later, uh, later this month. We've done several presentations that have been conducted in 
in pre pre preparation for severe weather season as normal. And then um, we uh, will continue to participate in other engagements such as Homeland Security, the Healthcare Coalition, uh, the airport authorities, um, requests for updating their plans and Salina Grace. So this next quarter, I know that the emergency management office will definitely shift focus towards severe weather season, and then obviously some continued planning efforts with our different partners. For our rural fire districts, uh, this is something that we've done every year since about 2014 to give a really good idea as far as how absolutely wonderful our volunteer rural fire departments are in Saline County and how much value they bring to the citizens and with their response efforts. And just to kind of give you an idea as far as the different calls that they respond to over the year um, that keep them really busy. So this year we saw a total of 90 grass fires and when we broke those down, we wanted to also find out what is the core cause of those. And it gets a little difficult sometimes. There's Sometimes we get the call and they go out and put the wet stuff on the red stuff. We don't know exactly what, what caused that. So we do have about 26% 20, of those calls that we don't exactly know exactly what happened. But we still run into the higher issues of whether they're control burn related type of calls or if they're from vehicles and trains, which the vehicles and trains does not surprise me from the agricultural community with farm implements that might be breaking down to cause those fires, as well as the fact that we're right in the crosshairs of I-70 and I-35 and and also the major uh, rail transportation that's in this county. So it doesn't surprise me that those numbers are, are a little bit higher. Um, to kind of give you a breakdown as far as the months that have been the busiest, uh, April, that is very typical uh, for this area for us to have a lot more uh, fire calls in the month of April. It's heavy grass burning season for our agricultural community. But what was a little surprising is that the month of January, they were really busy in 2018. Um, and a lot of that had to do with the drought conditions that we were in the beginning of the 2018 year. This also gives you a breakdown too of the medical calls. Um, now the Saline County is serviced by uh, the Salina Fire Department for their um, EMS service. However, um, all of our rural fire districts um, other than one also have first responders who are either EMTs or paramedics that will respond to those medical calls out in the county and typically arrive faster than what a EMS unit from Salina will to be able to provide that medical care um, before the EMS folks get there. We also like to do some comparisons of the years. Um, you can definitely see that we were down on uh, fire runs this year, which is okay. Um, we definitely started getting a lot more precipitation towards the uh, middle and the end of the year, which definitely helped with those fire calls. And then the other um, thing that we like to compare to is our burn permits and the number of control burns that are called into the emergency management office or the dispatch center. Um, as you remember, 2018 actually started the implementation of our new burn permit regulations and our burn permit processes. So we did issue a total of about 100 or 1,054 burn permits, and those are now lifetime burn permits. We still get requests from people um, um, that, but that's happened to renew them every single year was in place for a very, very, very long time. So it's just something new for our citizens to get used to. But um, for anybody that is out there and watches this particular presentation, just as a reminder, if your burn permit starts with an SA or an AG, that means that is at a lifetime burn permit and you don't ever have to renew it. Uh, for the number of control burns called in, we were down quite a bit. Uh, we also had a couple of weeks within the 2018 year that the conditions just were not conducive whatsoever to burning. And we also had a burn uh, ban that was implemented during that time. Uh, so that I think that probably uh, contributes a lot to those uh, particular numbers. Other than that, just to kind of give you a, a lowdown, the commissioners, you guys have a full report and it was in the commission packet uh, just to kind of give you um, an idea as far as our fire districts 
and how busy they are is that actually fire district number three ended up being the busiest in 2018 with district five in close second, which is pretty typical. Usually district five is a lot busier in that area and district five is in the, uh, the northeast part of the county. And then our busiest months, as I discussed before, were the April and January. But again, no surprise, just due to the dryness and the drought conditions that we had. So all of this information, as far as these statistic reports and prior year's statistic reports, is all on the county website for anybody that has any interest whatsoever in going back and looking at it. It's always good information to find out what the trends are and, and what those are in correlation with some of the weather events. So with that, I don't have anything further unless you have any questions. Well, I had a couple, but you've already answered them Great. with your <laughs> quite detailed report, I might add. Thank, Thank you, you very much for that. Uh, I, I would like to ask uh, about the... Uh, the um, things that we, we have where you can buy the lifetime uh, permit, mm -hmm. uh, how has that been accepted uh, throughout the rural community? I mean, are they happy with that? Uh, are there, yeah, well, first off, the burn permits have remained free, so you don't even have to come and buy them. Um, I'm sure they'd probably accept a little bit of a, a donation if you really want to, but um, I, it has been very, very well received throughout the county, very well received. I had one gentleman that came down and got it and he was so excited, he told me he was gonna go ahead and just tattoo it on his arm, which I thought. <laughs> a little over the okay, top maybe. But <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it has been very well received. Um, it has been a lot easier and it has taken a very large workload off of that emergency management department. Uh, so I think it's just something that we, we streamlined and it was, it was the right thing to do. It was definitely the right thing to do. And now all they really have to do is just call in and tell you that they're going to be burning at a, such and such a time and and uh, weather requirements remain the same and all that kind of that stuff. That is correct. Okay, uh, further questions or comments from the commissioners? One thing, Hannah, I was looking at your uh, grass fire numbers and you had 90 of them, mm -hmm. but you had 97 causes or right. multiple that's a good catch. So um, also, if you look further into the statistics report, there is a category that we call good intent calls. And what we mean by good intent calls is, let's say the fire department gets called out for a grass fire, but then they get there and they find out, oh no, it was a, it was a control burn. Um, or those, in, those good intent calls that um, just really didn't, they really didn't warrant a fire district response, but they were called out. So um, we do kind of lump those all in together. You're welcome. Further comments? Thank you, Hannah. Appreciate it very much. That concludes uh, today's agenda. Uh, are there any announcements or comments from commissioners? Any meetings attended or anything like that? I will say that I did attend the uh, North Central Kansas Highway District Highway meeting last week in Abilene, along with uh, Darren Fischel, our uh, Road and Bridge Administrator, and Justin Mater, uh, our engineer. Uh, it was a nice meeting. There was an update from Jay Hall, uh, KAC legislative representative, and uh, he updated everyone on what's going on at the Kansas legislature. There was a nice presentation from Norm Bowers, uh, road and bridge engineer for the KAC, a liaison type person, and uh, he gave a, a, a great presentation, in my uh, estimation, on crowning of roads and uh, different things that the county should be aware of, and we're going to uh, make an effort to bring that presentation to Saline County uh, particularly for the commissioners and and anyone else who might be interested. So that having been said, uh, I will take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Been moved and second that we adjourn today's meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We're adjourned. <laughs>